Howdy, howdy. It is Monday, September 27th, and it is I, Eric Arnold, here in the sports barn. Occasionally, I'm known as the Big E. You know, it's something just came to my attention within the last week or so. There's a professional wrestler out there named the Big E, and he's the champion? He's the champion? I gotta watch more pro wrestling, obviously. Um, and, and I'm pretty well versed on, you know, the ins and outs of pro wrestling. I just, you know, I just dropped it several years ago. I just, it aged out. You know, it's one of those things where I used to play basketball, but I don't anymore, you know. Uh, so that was one of the things that just kind of aged out where I just stopped playing or uh, watching professional wrestling. Uh, so I guess I need to pick it back up again. If for no other reason, uh, some some kids got the belt that's uh, named the Big E. You know, I would wager I probably have been calling myself the Big E longer than he has. In fact, probably longer than he's been alive. But I got to check this kid out and figure out who he is and whether he and I. You know, I'm sure just because he's named the Big E, I guess I need to root for him. So uh, the Big E is the heavyweight champion of the wwe go figure go figure well at any rate what are we here to do monday uh we got two picks for you today in nfl we got the monday night game here uh eagles cowboys and then we got a baseball game for you uh mondays typically are our catch-up day just to kind of bring you up to speed on what we're doing what our record is uh whether you need to pay attention to us or not because uh you know, uh, if I have a 500 record, you can go anywhere and get, I mean, you can flip a coin and get that. You can go to your uh, uh, clerk at the grocery store and ask her, what well, do you think the Eagles are going to win tonight? You know, you could do that. Uh, but if I have a above 500 record, then maybe you need to pay attention. So that's what the Monday video is for. Uh, we actually have a new subscriber. It's been like forever and a day. Since I've got to say hello to a new subscriber, uh, no heart spared, uh, all one word. Um, now that here's the thing with, uh, doing two different shows on the same channel. I don't know if this person signed up for sports or politics. I have no idea. So, uh, we'll probably just say hello to him twice. Uh, and that way we'll be safe. But anyway, uh, no heart spared. Welcome aboard. Happy to have you. Salute to you. All right. Um, well, let's get, put up our uh, record here. To ba we'll start with the baseball record. Uh, we had two winners last week. We've kind of fallen off the baseball. Like I said, I think what we're going to do next year is just strictly baseball all the way through the season. Because apparently we're pretty good at it. Uh, upwards of uh, almost 28 units to the good. 4.5% uh, rate of return on investment. I.e., if I bet 100 bucks, I can expect to get 4.5 of those dollars back every time. That's pretty good. That'll beat any uh, certificate of deposit you can find out there on the market. Uh, so, hey, that's... Uh, I'm real happy with our, our our effort this year in baseball. I feel comfortable that in a normal season, the model works, that uh, the model has identified certain trends, certain waves that seem to happen over and over and over again. So I feel pretty good that in baseball, we can consistently pick some winners. College football-wise, we got back on the winning track this weekend. Uh, eight and five in our picks. Hell, if you throw in uh, the uh, TV games, which I didn't officially pick, I just kind of, you know, gave you some ideas or thoughts on what I was thinking on the games. Uh, you throw that in there, we were like fifteen and seven. I mean, we really were good weekend. So. I think we'll keep that format where, you know, we'll have our official picks, but then, you know, if, if I pick UAB to beat Tulane, well, that's fun and all, uh, but that game's almost certainly not going to be in TV. You're not going to be able to watch it, so how much fun is that? 
So we'll try to, you know, throw opinions in there on the TV games. And hopefully, the, you know, if those opinions are good, man, at some point we'll just make those picks. Uh, I think we may have just gotten a little lucky. I mean, I know I had a pretty good uh, opinion that Notre Dame would cover against Wisconsin. That was right. Uh, Nebraska would hang close to Michigan State. That was right. Um, i trying to think of some others there. But, um, yeah, I mean, we did okay this weekend. Uh, there was no NFL video this uh, Sunday. Just ran out of time. I figured that would happen, and it did. Uh, I think we're getting a little more dialed in with the NFL. Problem is, we just run out of time. Just run out of time. I, I you know, I, the week's only so long, and uh, you know, I, I don't want to work every hour of the day. So maybe on Sundays, I just want to take it easy. It's too bad too, because I think the NFL does yield some pretty obvious easy betting situations. Uh, of which there was a handful on Sunday. I just didn't have the time to make the video. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, what else is going on? I guess uh, NFL-wise, we had the new record with the field goal with Justin Tucker beating the Lions with his 66-yard field goal. Uh, that's good because I could never remember the record that, that uh, Matt Prater had broken the record that forever was 63 yards. And then he broke it a few years ago, made it 64. And I could never remember that he did it. So this now I think I will remember. It's an even number, 66. And it's a little further than, you know, it's not incrementally further than Prater's record. It's, it's a 66, you know, it stands all by itself. Uh, so I think Justin Tucker, plus Justin Tucker, is going to be a Hall of Fame first ballot Hall of Famer. So I think he deserves to hold the record. Um, so that was probably the best thing I saw this weekend. Uh, college football-wise, I guess we got to talk about Arkansas. Uh, out of nowhere, I mean, this team's now what? Are they a top 10 team? I guess they should be. Um, you know, it's, it's, they'll get their big shot now against Georgia this uh, Saturday. So uh, Arkansas streaking to the num uh, top 10 with a bullet. Boom. Uh, pig, right? So I, someone taught me that one time, and I can't remember exactly how to do it. So I know I'll screw it up, so I won't try. But it's something like Suey Pig and Arkansas. Yeah. And uh, let's see, what else? So baseball-wise, that's kind of as we're heading into the home home stretch it looks like san francisco is going to win the west the national league west both teams look like they're going to have over 105 wins each of them the dodgers and the giants uh and i think the giants are going to get there they have a two game lead with six to go this team just doesn't lose and you got to think about how is this going to set up in the playoffs? Is it, you know, one, will the Dodgers win that one game of death? I mean, I can read their minds. They're all now saying to themselves, all right, all right, we're still cool. We're still cool. We got Scherzer. We're still cool. Everything's groovy. No problem. Scherzer doesn't lose. No problem. You know who else doesn't lose? The St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> So that's right now who they're lined up to play in the one game of death. I don't know if I feel good about that if I'm the Dodgers. It's like, shit, we're going to play some team that hasn't lost in uh, three weeks? We're going to uh, – some team that's got like a 17-game or 16-game winning streak? I think they said – or I saw a stat. This is their longest winning streak since 1892. I'll put this in the comments. Anyone that knows who the United States president was in 1892, without having to look it up, go ahead and put it in the comments. I want to see if anyone knows the answer to that. But that's a long time ago. And that's how many games in a row the Cardinals, they just don't lose. So that's setting up to be one hell of a one-game Sudden death matchup next week, Dodgers Cardinals. I'd be trying to get the hell out of that matchup if I was the Dodgers, but pfft, you know, the Giants don't lose either. So, you know, the Dodgers might just be painted into a corner here. 
I think that's fantastical that here's a team that could win 100, 500, 6 games and get eliminated in the first weekend. Boom, gone out. <laughs> One game and done. Uh, so that's, that's interesting. Uh, the only other matchup in the National League that has any doubt to it is will the Braves hang on? Uh, the Phillies are close. There's three games. Phillies and Braves in Atlanta starting Tuesday. That could determine the division. It, it Basically, the Braves just need to win one game, maybe two, and that'll be the end of the Phillies. Uh, the Phillies have to sweep. Realistically, to make it, the Phillies have to sweep. I think that's unlikely. But the Phillies will have their best pitchers lined up to go, so possible it's possible we'll see that's tomorrow night uh we'll definitely be there for that uh, american league uh it's it, you know the usual suspects have already locked it up the aforementioned astros uh tampa bay and uh white Sox. but then you got the uh yankees red Sox, and blue jays all fighting for two slots so who's gonna make it who's not um well, I don't know. I, I, it, right now, it certainly looks like the Yankees and Red Sox have the inside track. Uh, the Blue Jays have three starting tomorrow with the Yankees, so that's their chance to get in. If they could sweep the Yankees, they would probably get in. So that's a game to be looking at Tuesday night. Uh, well, all right, let's get to the picks. I don't know what else to say here. Um, do, 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 so, da, 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 da. whoops, that's wrong. Here we are. All right. To no one's surprise, I'm taking the Eagles. I'm taking the Eagles here tonight. Um, oh, I actually think the Eagles are going to win this game. I, 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 I'm, uh, I don't know why I, I, you know, I do have one pretty strong trend that goes in the Eagles favor. So. I feel okay about that. It's just it's almost a hunch. It's just a lot of bad stuff blew out of town this off season for the Eagles, namely Carson Wentz. Whoosh, gone. You know, Doug Peterson, he had turned into a real negative force here for the Eagles last year. He just did not get along with the management. For whatever reason, the management just never warmed up to Doug. They, they, he won a Super Bowl, and they still treated him like he was some, you know, rummy or something. They, he held his hand, wouldn't let him do what he wanted to do, and he got the shits of it. So, you know, there was a lot of bad energy around this team last year. Well, I think most of that's now, if not all, gone, gone. You know, I don't think it's a coincidence that the Indianapolis Colts are 0-3 with Carson Wentz. Guy's not a good quarterback. So I think a lot of that's going. I think what the Eagles have now is a promising young team. The Cowboys, I almost think they're going to be looking past the Eagles here. They had, you know, Monday, what was it, the opener against the champions down in Tampa that they went to the wall playing those guys and just lost. Then they went to the wall last weekend against uh, the Chargers out in Los Angeles and just won. They just won that one. Now they're coming home. That's a lot of energy expended early in the year. And I feel this is just kind of a down spot for them, that they're just like, all right, I, we're going to get up for three straight games? That's hard to do. The Eagles, they didn't play a particularly good game last Sunday. I think they can play a lot better than they did last Sunday. The San Francisco's okay, but I don't know they're great. So uh, I think the Eagles are going to play better than they did Sunday. Uh, this number almost feels wrongish to me. In other words, I would have thought the Cowboys would have been a much bigger favorite. So to me, that's almost like a reverse thing that's good for the Eagles. It's like somebody thinks the Eagles, somebody smart, probably smarter than me, thinks the Eagles are good. Uh, you know, why would this number not be Cowboys by seven uh, with the Cowboys being one and one and having played a much more impressive uh, set of teams than the Eagles have? Uh, why is it only three and a half? 
You know, the Eagles were 4-11-1 last year. The Cowboys getting back their superstar quarterback, Dak Prescott. Why are the Cowboys not seven-point favorites? So to me right there, that tells you somebody knows something. The Eagles are actually pretty good. So that's where we're at on that. And we get the beautiful half point. You know, the half point is always a beautiful thing. It comes into play a lot in the NFL. The NFL numbers are usually low and consistent. They, they, you know, numbers land on three. They land on three. They just do because that's what coaches play towards, the threes and the sevens. So all these reasons, we're going to go ahead with the Philadelphia Eagles to beat the Dallas Cowboys tonight. And then they'll throw in a baseball game here for Pittsburgh Louie. He'll, he'll probably be the only one in America that's, well, he's a Steeler fan, so I could see that where he doesn't give a shit about the Cowboys and the Eagles, so he's probably sitting there watching, you know, some meaningless, and I mean meaningless. There's really only two games tonight that mean anything. One's the A's and Mariners where they've got an outside chance to slip into that wild card spot. One. Uh, and, and then this game, and you say, well, why does this game mean anything? Well, it doesn't, but we're going to bet on it. So that's why it means something. We're going to go ahead with the Rockies here. Uh, I think this is a nice spot for them. The Rockies, their record in September is 11 and 12. You're saying, well, that's hardly anything to get excited about. Well, the Nationals record is 9 and 15. Plus, if you look at who the Rockies have played in September, oh man, it's like a who's who of go who's going to be in the playoffs. Uh, they played the Phillies, not going to be in the playoffs. The Braves, uh, they have played the Giants, the Dodgers, a lot of tough competition, and they're still 11 and 12. So that's a long way of saying I think the Rockies are not a dead team. I think this is a team that's still playing. It hasn't just mailed it in yet. I think the Nationals here on their last road trip, you know, the season's over. They know it. They want to just go home. Let's get this week over with and go to hell home. One other thing, one other possibility here with the Rockies, if they, well, they have no say in it, but if, the Phillies and Braves end up tied. The, the, well, the, within a half a game. The, the Braves have a game with the Rockies that has not yet been able to be made up. You know, so it's hanging out there, this extra game. So if the Braves and Phillies finish within a half game either way, they got to play this extra game in Atlanta against the Rockies. They got to make this game up. So I think the Rockies know that, and they're kind of like, that could be, you know, I think some players would be like, oh, God damn, the season was over, and now we got to go all the way to Atlanta for this extra one game. But some of those guys, if I was on that team, I'd be kind of like, all right, all right, we get like one, this is a one-game playoff for us. We get to be on national television where everybody's going to get to watch us, and we could, we could wreck somebody's year. We could stick it up somebody's ass. This might be fun. You know, maybe we'll get a taste of what it's like to be in the playoffs as we build towards next year. So I'd, I, if I was the Rockies, I'd be kind of paying attention. Maybe we do get that one game playoff where we get to be on TV and everyone sees us. Uh, I, I just kind of think for all these reasons, the Rockies, and of course the Rockies are a fantastic home team. Uh, and we're at home. So uh, Marquez, he's been, it's win day when he pitches this year. This guy has some ridiculous win-loss record this year. Uh, all this stuff adds up to a Rockies night. So those are the plays for today. The Eagles, E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles, and the Rockies. There you have that. Great, good, thanks. Appreciate you being here. New subscriber, we appreciate you. Uh, as I've always said, uh, it depends on what your settings are, subscribers, because I know we've gotten some new ones. I'm like, why am I not getting welcomed? Well, I can't see if your settings are set up such that it keeps that private. I can't see it. I know I got a subscriber, but I don't know who it is. 
uh, no heart spared. He's got his setting set up or her setting set up such that uh, it's public uh, when that person subscribes to a channel that I can see it. So therefore I welcome that person. Whatever, very good, thanks for being here. Let's get some more winners this week. Let's onwards and upwards. Eric Arnold signing off.